been given in such a way where this generous widow would feel compelled to put herself further into poverty? How are they keeping a system in place that is to their benefit, but to the detriment of others within that system? Moving those kinds of questions into today, are we benefiting from keeping others in poverty? Like those in religious power benefited from someone on the margins of society, trusting the system enough to give her everything. It would be easier to simply label the scribes as evil in our mind's eyes and to ponder questions like these, wouldn't it? <coughs> in like manner, when we put people on pedestals in our minds, we tend to assume that what they do is unattainable. We honor them to keep ourselves safe. As Emily Town says, at times, it seems that sacrifice is at its best when someone else is doing it. <laughs> we lift others high on the pedestal with the poor and widow, keeping them distinct and distant from our daily lives. The focus is on their giving and the inadequacy of ours, but nothing changes. This is one of the problems when we put people on pedestals. We don't imagine ourselves alongside them because what they represent for us is often more than we can give or more than we can even imagine we are capable of giving. Here is where it's really important to note that Jesus does not say that everyone should give like this widow. What he says here is actually, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Jesus highlights that the poor widow has put in more than everyone else based on what she has in total. She put in everything she had, all she had. For her, this was a sacrifice of incredible proportion. However, Jesus does not say that we are to replicate this exact act. He does not say, go and do likewise. It's important that we do not replicate the scribes' actions, devouring widows' houses, as the text says. If we are tempted to read this passage as go and do likewise directed from Jesus, we would do well to note that this text could all be used all too easily to hurt those who have the least. For someone to say, give all you have to anyone who can barely afford food or a home it would be to go against so many biblical teachings about how we are to care for the orphan, the widow, those without clothes and it is not our job, then, as Christians, to tell the poorest among us to give all they have because Jesus said so. He said no such thing. He does, however, point out for us that she gave everything. Her gift was worth more than all of the others. It was an act of devotion and an act of worship. It is quite possible, too, that it was an act of trust in God that simultaneously put a spotlight on the unjust system of the religious elite benefiting from the gifts of the poor. Perhaps her gift was one of justice-seeking, putting the importance of highlighting such corruption above even her own need to survive. <laughs> her gift in this way was one of pure worship, exercising a level of trust in God that was astounding, even if ill-advised from a financial counselor's view. We don't know her exact motives, we don't know her exact intentions, but we can wonder about them. What kind of trust goes into making that decision? How long did she debate whether or not to give it all to God, perhaps for the sake of her neighbor's welfare? What was she returning home to, I wonder? Was there even bread left in her house? What caused her to make such a bold decision to give everything that she had? There are so many questions we can ask, but what we do know is that Jesus recognizes 
she put in more than all of the others contributing to the treasury. Her gift was sacrificial on so many levels, regardless of the interpretive lens that we bring to her motives. So often we think of sacrifice as something that has to be done, as some sort of difficult obligation, something that we notice because it feels like too much, a hardship going above and beyond in some way that is noticeably difficult to us. If we think of sacrifice in this way, then it feels like an obligation to give. We give because Jesus said so. That's not very inspiring, is it? <laughs> it also isn't very helpful to our spiritual lives, either. Instead, if you look at the roots of this word, sacrifice, you will see that it combines to make with sacred. To make in other words, as Towns puts it, sacrifice is something of value. Something of value offered as an act of devotion or worship to God. Instead of trying to imagine ourselves in this scripture by thinking of ourselves as these seemingly inaccessible characters, either the scribes or the widow, but we all too easily either condemn or elevate on a pedestal. What happens if we instead ponder and pray about what Jesus saw in the widow's giving? What was he able to see in her offering? She cast in as much as she had all of her life. The Greek word used here, by all means, her life or the present state of her existence. She didn't just put in what she had to live on. In the Greek, we can hear that as Jesus interpreted the widow's actions, she cast in her whole life. Jesus saw something of himself in her, <coughs> didn't he? Pause for a moment and really think about that. Jesus saw something of himself in this woman who gave her whole life. Something that Jesus would soon do. Professor Caroline Lewis points out that not only would Jesus soon give his own life, but in so many ways, by this point in the narrative in Mark, Jesus already has. Lewis reminds us that Jesus constantly embraced rejection and consistently accepted the questioning of his followers. He confirmed over and over again that following him would mean whole life giving and whole life living. The widow's example should be nothing new, and at the same time should be everything new. She embodies Jesus' own ministry. She acts out Jesus' own call. She believes that what she does will manifest itself in something beyond herself. This is discipleship. But more so, according to Mark, this is the essence of God. God knows nothing else than to give God's whole life. This is the essence of God, Lewis says. To give God's whole self. And here, now, in this unnamed widow, God is doing it again. God calls us to whole life living what discipleship's all about. Sacrifice means to make sacred. What does it mean to live sacrificially? Making sacred our everyday decisions about how we spend, how we make use of, and how we give away our time and our energy and our imagination, our creativity, our love. This thing that Lewis refers to as whole life living this discipleship business. What does it look like for you and for me, I wonder? What if we were to begin every day with the intention of living as a gift to God? The contents of an entire day offered as an act of devotion or worship. What does that look like for you? Town says those coins represent more than money. Those coins represent faith-filled offering found in presenting all of who we are and all we hope to become to God for service in the world. 
Indeed, offering in this sense is something other than prayer or tithes or Eucharist. It is not so much the act of giving or receiving as it is the act of being. If my whole life, my whole life can become an offering to God, what does that mean for me? What does it mean to God, I wonder? How can my life become a living sacrifice, remembering that a sacrifice is something of value? Offered as an act of devotion or worship. What might whole life living look like for you and for me? Wholehearted, whole life living. This as a daily practice. How might that shape us? How can this bring more joy into our hearts as we learn day by day to open ourselves up to each other and to the world? How might sacrificial giving or sacrificial living help us all come one step closer and one step closer to living in the kingdom of heaven here on this earth? This passage is not just about replicating her generous gift or who among us could measure up. But this passage is about recognizing and reflecting her orientation to the world, her way of being in this world, a way which Jesus himself recognizes as gift above all other gifts. She is all in. She's all in. Lord, here I am. I don't know about you, but I want, I really want to tell God every single day that I am all in. I'm all in for striving to follow Jesus' own way of being in the world. I am all in for living compassionately as I'm able and seeking to grow in my ability to live into compassion. I am all in for learning how to forgive, letting God's own forgiveness wash over me as many times as it takes for me to soak it up and extend that grace. I am all in for discerning how the gifts that God has placed in my hands can go toward the creation of a community throughout the world where all are fed and housed and clothed and visited and welcomed in Jesus' name. I want to tell God every single day that I'm all in, and all of that comes with continual practice, doesn't it? Because the truth of the matter is, as much as I want to say I'm all in every single day, there are some days that I am more in than others. <laughs> Some days it feels like I put a toe in. <laughs> Faith is something that we practice. Forgiveness is a practice. Ministries of compassion are practice. The stewardship of our whole lives is something that we have to practice. Saying to God, I am all in is a daily practice. So today, tonight, on this Pledge Dedication Sunday, I do ponder with me this challenging text. I invite you to consider these things with me. What does it mean for you to live sacrificially, making sacred your every day? What does wholehearted, whole life living mean for you specifically? How will you say, I am all in to God? today and tomorrow and every single day of your life. May the practice of whole life living bring us closer to God and to our neighbors in ways that surprise us, in ways that challenge us, in ways that draw the kingdom of heaven closer and closer on this earth, day by blessed day. And may we practice whole life living in the name of the one who saw himself in the unnamed widow's offering of her whole self, her whole life. May it be so in Jesus' name. To God be the glory now and forever.